What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode number two of our year number two off season. In this episode, we're going to go over strictly recruiting and basically go over all of our 12 team builder teams and figure out who went where and what the boards look like as well. So let's get this thing underway and take a look at Ardmore's board here first and foremost. All right, so checking out the overall rating, we're actually going to give up on Map Radica. We're going to just give up and, and let the Skeeters have Map Radica. They need him on that defense. And, you know, we're looking at guys on the on the line like Orlando Goodlove, Buchanan. We're, we're really wanting to hit those guys hard. Yeah, I think it's a smart move. You're a little too far behind. And, well, I mean, you could make that, you could pick that up with 15,000 points, but you've got other players that you have better odds of getting. Considering Shreveport has already signed a bunch of players, they're going to be putting all of their chips on Bradica. We know that because we're in control of Shreveport. Exactly. And Armore knows their strategy. So Right. So it's better strategy to go after a guy like Buchanan. He's from Missouri. It just makes some sense. And, of course, being only down 910, and we need Orlando Goodlove. We've got a lot of players that we're losing on the line as far as seniors go, so it, it only make, it makes sense for us. We're also going after Matthew Henry strictly because if we can't get Matt Bradica, you might as well go after a more less – lesser player than Matthew Henry. so Got to shore we're, up the defense. Yep, and then uh, we're going to try to get Caleb Gaston and then Brian Washington at re wide receiver, a four-star player out of Florida. A lot of good players come out of Florida. Doesn't look too bad. It doesn't no, look too it's, bad. it's actually pretty bad because we only have 10,000 points, and we need to sign Corey Hargrove, and to date I believe we have seven players signed in our draft class. Now, Andrew Gibson, I think we should get him. I mean, we're up by 3,000. It's just we really need Hargrove. So I'm willing to go this far to get Hargrove to try to save some kind of face. Wallace Jones, our nearest competitor, is Denver, down by 2,900. And then Sean Richardson at tight end. I think we can get him. Lee Covington, we're in the lead. But, I mean, honestly, I'm not that interested in, uh, I don't know, jeez. Like, I have no points down here. Well, that's the thing. Like, you have to – it's either you're going to go hard at one guy and get him in or you're going to just spread yourself too thin almost and not get anybody. Yeah, I so, mean, Lee Covington, I don't I don't need him. He's a 69 as a freshman, but what I'm worried about is a team like UMass or Fresno, if they're more desperate at quarterback than I am, they're going to put a ton of points on him. And I don't need a quarterback. I got my quarterback for the next three years. I've got Graham Keith who can play quarterback, and then I, actually Hargrove can play QB as well, although I'm probably going to move him. But Andrew Gibson, I would like to get him. I don't need him. I would much rather get Travis Collier and Tariq Sims just because we need some defensive help, and that's what I mean when I say this class is miserable. we got Brian Reese. I think we'll pick him up, and then everything else, like I can't get these guys. You just didn't kid. have you didn't have the number of commits during the season because I think you were going after the top tier type of players. Yeah, it was a horrible. Early. It was a terrible draft strategy, or uh, recruiting strategy rather. Stephen Cust might be on the uh, chopping block because of that. No, he's not on the hot seat. We we picked up some players last year. I'm okay with whoever I get my scraps. But next year, we're definitely going to have to switch the strategy up. Start with people who have us number one on the board, regardless of their perceived ability, versus us trying to stretch our, you know, out, your, your I'll kick the coverage. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. yeah, good one. Oh, you always got good sayings. That's one of them. Next up, we're going to take a look at ACU. All right, so big-time class here for ACU, guys that are already committed. Travis Myrick, Adam McDaniel, Tommy Roth, Aiden Mitchell, Justice Grant, Alex Jefferson. It just doesn't oh. stop, guys. It's such a good such a good group. Yeah, this is totally shaping up, I think, to be maybe a number one draft class. We'll have to, we'll have to check and see where they finish up. Um, this is a guy we were trying to get. I don't know if this is a good idea, spending 12000 on a guy we're currently N.A. Just because he was his lock percent was so low. I thought we might be able to reach down and get this guy, 68 cornerback. He hasn't really committed to anybody. I mean, Georgia is number one, and, I mean, they're in the red, so he hasn't really even made a decision. I mean, maybe 
maybe ACU shows enough of an interest in him and he says, oh, somebody actually really wants me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking there. ACU might have a short-term need at cornerback next year. John Morris is a 68, not a special player. And then Bryant, they're already loaded. I mean, I like Bryant quite a bit, but he is already... I mean, he's like an Amarillo, and ACU's kind of set at quarterback. Same with Ryan Todd at Juco, not yeah, really number one. That either. doesn't really do too much. Correct. A Juco for ACU doesn't do Maybe a Mickey lot there. Browning. Maybe we should... Uh, I might try this. Put it all on Mickey well, Brown. Take him away from Broken Arrow. Going to compete with Broken Arrow on that. Let's try it. But yeah, this is this is a great class. Good in, in quality and quantity. Yep. I'm going to say maybe just a little bit because when we look at them compared to ACU, ACU lost conference championship game. They lost once in the regular season to Denver Tech, and they still hauled in a good class. And most people would be looking at this as a you know you're being recruited by Denver Tech and thinking I want to win some championships. Look at look at the people that got on this list that haven't yet committed. Yeah, you got a point there. They they are number one though for Bobby Greer and Cody Lee, uh, only up by five seventy though. You got to worry about Washington and Florida. Derek Davis, they got to steal him from Colorado. Kyle Singleton, they already got. So they're in the lead for a lot of quality players, but they have not sealed the deal yet. Ricky Carey is a guy I, I think they really want to get. He's a 72, only a three-star for some reason. I'm not sure why exactly, but there's a couple of guys here that we're going to kind of punt. you got a Juco and Tony Thomas, Justin Ross, way far behind. Anthony Turner, four-star, but, I mean, I don't think it really helps them where they're at. What the, I mean, they're, they're on track to get Greer. I don't think he's. they need him. They're going to have Makovich for two more years. A couple wide receivers down here that, I don't think we really need to reach for cornerback. Might be a little bit of an area. They are they are losing Jordy Williams and uh, Glendale Bullock's a strong safety is going to be gone yeah. here next season. So yeah, defensive backfield is kind of an issue for Denver Tech. Yeah, we'll we'll try to get a couple of those guys. These guys aren't going to help Denver Tech win championships. Let's be frank. Yes. So correct. we don't need we don't need them. You guys are well aware that Ardmore is punting Matt Bradica. We're going to basically just give him. To Shreveport, no competition. Unless Syracuse Unless, yeah, goes exactly. in really hard. That's the only thing I'm worried about there. And Jay Balmer out of Virginia. He's really been toying with Shreveport all recruiting process, going Shreveport to Maryland, back to Shreveport, back I, to Maryland. He's all over the board. I think he's faking. I think he's faking out right now. He's he's really leaning towards Shreveport and not Maryland. I think that this is just a ploy by Jay Balmer to be like, you know what, uh, I want – I want free books. I want. <laughs> I don't know. I want. I want. I want my dinners and my meals paid for. All that. So that I think that's what's really going on here. If you don't get me, I'm going to Maryland. James Foster, a JUCO. That I mean, hey, he's a 69 overall. It could help him for the the short term right now, just as like a a gap to plug that gap. Uh, they did get a really good class. I feel like during the season, so they don't have a ton of scholarships left to offer. They have six to offer. George Thomas, a pretty solid wide receiver. you got to focus on that. They also got Matt Jenkins. They got Blanchard and Collings, which are our players. Yep. I mean, they've signed them a long time ago, yep. as well as Bud Light Gunner. Ronnie, it's, a good, it's a good class, guys. Yeah. Ronnie Scott. And I'm looking for guys that are still Seth pursuing. Lawson. they got Seth Lawson, Brian Scott, James Hughes. And probably take a little bit off of, in my opinion, let's take a little bit off of Brian Scott and put it towards Seth Lawson because I know that they lost Malachi Johnson Jr. They're going to need some help there. And as far as pass rushing goes, yeah, I mean, think about that, guys. A six foot five, two thirty six defensive end, like, huh? That you got to go after that guy, hard. All right, so some pretty cool stuff going on for the Amber Wave. Donald Parker, the big time tackle, they sealed the deal on him nick williams so again guys are focusing on that line defensively and offensively jameel carter is kind of that wildcat player can play everywhere this is not going to be a really nice fit for the amber wave antoine skinner a free safety 72 overall he's a three star so maybe the potential isn't quite there maybe he's just going to be that type of guy that's what camu likes to do they try to find these diamonds in the rough here james tootens or Tuttons, I don't know how to say that. They're going to start utilizing more of their wide receivers this year. They also got Justin Potts at a 68, so they're they're starting to target more wideouts. Marvin Key, a scrambler type of quarterback. 
they want a guy like that if they're going to try to implement a little more option play uh, plays in their playbook because uh, I know they are switching over to more of that read option and passing. Randy Baker, another tackle. It's going to be pretty solid for them. They're also addressing halfback to get it, Rob Watson. So it's a good class. They fi- they fixed up some things that you know had been kind of pressing going into this season. And uh, they also are in the lead for Brandon Ray big time. So that looks like that's going to happen too. All right, Odessa State. We know they are hitting that recruiting trail really hard. Let's see what they're up to. All right, a couple big options here. We know Odessa will have a hole at quarterback. Now, Pat Dowdell is listed as an athlete, can definitely play the quarterback position well at 6'5", 205, and they're going up against Texas Tech here. He's out of weather for Texas. That's going to have that's going to be a huge get. They need to get him, and if they don't get him, they got to get this guy, John Johnson, who, I mean, both. He, I think these are good, two good quarterback choices. Hopefully they get both. Hopefully they get both, but here's the thing. Here's what I'm looking at as far as deeper analysis goes. So if you're Pat Dowdell, if you're looking at John Johnson and where he's deciding to go, if you know that you can play quarterback as well, which, I mean, think about this. John Johnson, number two, you got Texas Tech right behind him, right? He's also wanting to go to Texas Tech. They're wanting to go to the same schools, Number one, number two. Yeah. So, so it's like wherever, a game of chicken going on here. Ex- I, exactly. I think the onus, though, would be on Johnson because if Dowdell goes to Odessa and takes the quarterback job, then, then Johnson's, Johnson's stuck for four years as a backup, and he'll probably like to transfer. Right. So interesting so, situation there. Yeah, they're playing off each other. Micah Gutierrez, we're down by 1,200, but we have so much invested in Dowdell and Johnson. I think we're going to take a pass on Micah Hargrove. Is a tough one because we got Nebraska State and Vanderbilt's only down by five. I don't know if we, we're going to have enough to invest there. Matthew Henry and Lance Hodge in the mix. Matt Madison, Hartman. So wide receiver is going to be a pressing issue. So this is why we can't really go after Hargrove that hard because we got a lot of these mid-range wide receivers that we are spending points on. And we're trying to get a couple. So it'll be tough. And defense as well. Defensive line, they got Hodge there. So Hargrove, we're just going to have to go with that and, and pray. But these guys are the two big guys that we need to get. All right. Little Rock's going to have to hit this recruiting trail really hard because they did lose a lot of talent. All right. So looking at their board here, Marcus Hollis, outside linebacker, 74 overall, the number 11 linebacker in the country. As far as recruiting goes, this is a big-time get. I don't know, though. It's going to be close. Auburn is definitely going to make their push for this player. They also got Brandon Kent, the center, Thomas Lopez, wide receiver. So it's looking pretty solid. It's looking pretty solid. But, again, they're going to have to they're going to have to nail the guys that they're, they're wanting to get here. The yeah. athlete, Anthony Webb. They got another athlete in Seth Williams, Jordan Nicholas, the defensive tackle. They're, they're getting Daniel Gunner Taggart. Rivers some weapons. Yes. Definitely that, a wide receiver. Got to develop these guys over the course of the next three years. Antoine Cook can also play out there as well. And you got some defensive help here with Grant, Tolbert, Mack, and Randall. So got to seal the deal on some of these guys. Yeah, and that's pretty much the big thing. They want to go after athletes, see what, see what they can do, see where they can go. And also go after wide receivers, guys that they know can play wide receiver, and just kind of throw stuff at the wall, see what is best, and then put it out there in the starting lineup to get uh, Rivers those weapons. Optimize the offense. All right, Broken Arrow, killing it on the recruiting trail. Let's see what they're doing. One of the best classes in the nation, in my opinion. No doubt. I mean, we're looking at the top of the board. This is already a sealed deal, and that's going to help them because they got 15,000 points to play with so charles bryant not gonna they're gonna pass on him they got buster smith and bryant street they're looking at mctaggart washington randy baker they are gonna make an attempt at might be a little bit too far behind there daryl sims we're putting 1900 on him mickey browning i don't know if we're gonna survive uh that charge by acu so i'm just gonna yeah twelve thousand. we're just gonna we're going to spend those points elsewhere, me thinks. In 1,200. Or, yeah, ACU has 12,000 on Mickey Browning. Oh, oh, oh so yeah, yeah, right, right, right. I think we're, right. we're going to shift gears and 
Let's see. Let's see. CJ Hill was actually on Ardmore's board, and we we went off of him. Yeah. But he looks like he's going to be pretty good. I will just tell you that. I shouldn't be because Broken Arrow is my rival. Yeah. But uh, CJ Hill looks like he's going to be... He's going to be pretty solid. But now you're going after Brian Washington. No! Don't steal Brian Washington. Pittsburgh is really in the mix, too. So that's going to be hard. But we'll see what they do. I mean, they've already got a top 10 class right now. Definitely going to finish in the top 10. Hopefully it gets even better. Did you forget about these guys? Hopefully not. All right, so how do you make an irrelevant team better? That's the objective for the Amarillo Armadillos. And in order to do that, you got to get some athletes and you got to get line help. You got to build from the inside outward. And that's what they did last year. Now they're going to do the same thing this year. So they're going after the number 20 guard from Aventura, Florida, Morris Campbell. Now we've talked about this guy in recent videos and in videos past on, yeah. on these Wednesday updates. And Morris Campbell looks like he's going to be pretty good, okay? 78 overall player. They also got Slade Morton, a 77. So they've got both left guard and right guard figured out for the next season. Freddie Bolden they're going to go after at strong safety. He looks like he's a he's a playmaker, guys. Yeah. Number six safety. That'd be a big one. Chad Randall at center. You got 1,600 there. Justin Ross is a disappointment because we added him on multiple big tall boards but he is fixated on going to the mac for some reason i don't know why maybe it's just he just thinks that he's not good enough to play in the big 12 I that must know. be it jermaine moore the 70 overall kicker he's is a, a juco, juco one star yeah, but you a, need a kicker it's a lot of points to be putting on a kicker but i guess they're really going after him really hard try to try to get that thing going here so trevor givens also going to go after him Arden moore is the number one on the list but we have pulled off of trevor givens as well nigel gonzalez a running back but Lance Hodge is an interesting case here because, again, they really want to focus on defense and especially defensive line. And that's why we're going to be putting 2200 on Lance Hodge to try to sway his opinion. Hopefully, TCU does not make a push because if they make any sort of push, 500, 600, you lost out. If Odessa makes any sort of push, then we lost out. Marcus Dahl at wide receiver, 67 overall. We're in the lead for him by 1,200. That's why we're going to try to match that lead and go to 1,300. Hopefully we get that. Steven Pollard, strong safety, 1,900 points there. Again, they need some playmakers on defense, and that's why they're going after that. So it's a pretty good board, my friends. Let's check out the McAllen Matadors recruiting board. I see a lot of red. Lots of it. I mean, they did a really good job up here. Billy Adams, we talked about him. I got a good feeling about Billy Adams. I do too. I don't know why. It's just uh, it's just his name or something that just like clicks with me for whatever reason. Yeah. Billy Adams. I can just see him in the McAllen red. So Philip Goddard and Adam Murphy were each going to put t- over 2,000, or they will each have over 2,000 points. Serge Johnson out of West Virginia. They got 1,285. Joe Barnett. 1500 so Juan Miller 13 so we got a lot of points to spend here Tariq Sims they're going toe-to-toe with Nebraska State going toe-to-toe over Nick Whitaker as well Roger Sanders the guy they're looking at George Bowser they need this guy because their offensive line they lost some talent there they gotta they gotta replace that pronto and then Jimmy Hodges out of Idaho I've been trying to get this guy for weeks I don't know why I just I like him out of Grangeville Idaho but we gotta seal the deal all right, final team here before we unveil the results. Midland State Mustangs. So we know they've already got Kent Collins out of Toronto. He's the future right now. John Johnson locked us out some time ago. Freddie Bolden, we're in the lead. We'll see if that's enough. I mean, these you're going to get 1,300 points on him. I think that should be good enough, I would hope. And Marilla was making that push for Freddie Bolden. John Weber, we gotta, we're got putting a lot of points on him. Basically... I mean, this class is already kind of taking shape for Midland. Darnell Baker, we're down to Nebraska. Juco, this is another team that, that needs some help on the offensive line. We're giving these guys a, a token 100 points. Hopefully they survive. I'm not sure if we can get them. And now wow, we're sort of spreading out here. There's no way that's going to work. So, Or that. we got to figure something out here, man. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be pulling some money off. 
Not money. <laughs> oh, or is money. it money? Or is it money? Is Ten, it money? 10,000 points? Is that... Oh. Those are dollars? Four, we're going to give Chris Davis $405,000 pay for his schooling here. Not that much. That's what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. That's why this game got banned. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The strategy for me for this is that, yeah, you're down 430 with this guy. No, you're up 430 with this guy. You always want to match... You want to match your lead, just in case. Yeah, you know, I'm not pulling off a of Weber, though. He's, he's just so he's such a big-time recruit, the only guy that we're really going to lose, and I want to get him. This is a period for me, this final week of recruiting, this is always a period where it's like, don't if you're in desperate, dire need to get multiple positions, then, yeah, you want to start spreading it around. But for Midland... You need, like, just a couple guys. You need right. just a couple guys. And that's why you go hard at a guy like John Weber or a Darnell Baker or, you know. I mean, look at the class that you just brought in, right? You just got it's Kent okay. Collins. You got a pretty decent class. Yeah, I mean, you, you just go after a couple guys. You, you pick the ones you want, and you go all in. And you really finish off the recruiting season on a high note. All right, so surprise, surprise, Matt Bradica goes to the Skeeters, and we ended up getting Orlando Goodlove and Eric Buchanan. Woohoo! I gotta love that. That's big time for this program. Got the guard, got the tight end. This is a big, big get for John Hicks and, well, Tremaine Young, the yeah. new coach. Yep, and we lost Chad Randall to Texas. Not good. Matthew Henry went to Odessa and Gibbons. Just didn't get, en get enough on him. Nope, you lost by kind of a sizable margin there, but... You could have made it up. Maybe you spent too much. Oh, we got Brian Washington? Oh, did you? Let me, wow. Let me see. Maybe you spent too much on Good Love and Buchanan, but better safe than sorry, I would say, when it comes to those guys. But you get Brian Washington over Broken Arrow wow. by 385. Wow. wow, we even pulled some off. Hmm, that's amazing. CJ Hill goes to Michigan State. Screw that. Yeah, yeah. screw that. So you I get, hate Michigan State. You get Caleb Gaston. We pulled money off of him, too. Points. Sorry. Oh yeah. Points. Money. Points. Everybody. Points. 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 Breaking news: Ardmore is been sanctioned by this. <laughs> so. Oh, then we got Willie Washington. He's Willie the, Washington. He's cousin. Cousins. Cousin. Yeah. Cousin from different states. All right. So I think that shaped up pretty well for you. Yep. It's pretty good. So fellas, wait till you see this crappy class. Yeah, I already admitted it. But this was the big deal. We got Corey Hargrove out of Memphis. You don't sound too excited about it. I'll take it. Andrew Gibson, how did that happen? So I only put 500 on him, and but we got absolutely BTFO by UCLA here. 4,800 points. My God. What did they do? They put like 15,000 on him or something. This came from like their 10th place. They really think that this guy out of Kentucky is going to be their saving grace? How about this? Wallace Jones, we were in the lead comfortably over Denver for the safety out of Idaho, and he... Picks Denver Tech by 3,000. That was bizarre. We eke out Louisiana Tech for Sean Richardson. I think that'll help the passing game. I think he's going to be a big piece there. Eric Payne coming our way. Cedric Stevens was a guy we didn't really try for. Travis Collier, basically, you know, we edged out Louisiana Lafayette there. Tariq Sims, I'm happy we got this guy. I want to see what position he can play and what he can do. John Mark, Jason Williams, Nick Whitaker, we got blown out. So... Not I'm really good. I'm really waiting for that one day where Nebraska State gets that big, like game changing sign. I know that yeah. Shinosky was was the big one for you recently, and he's been really doing really well. I mean, for he, was you a, guys. he was a total under the radar player though. Yeah. He was he was a diamond in the rough. Yeah, I'm just waiting for that big one. Yeah. That high seventies, that low eighties type of guy that's hopefully, really gonna change that program. Hopefully we get it next year. This class is really light in terms of quantity. I'm hoping we can you know, we'll stay a little bit within our range next year and, and we're gonna have to sign a lot of guys to replace the outgoing class for sure. ACU, we know that this class has been shaping up very well right now. Ryan Todd, we got him, but he's not signing. And the same with Charles Bryant. That sucks. But you know what, Charles Bryant? We're going to be doing something good for you. We'll put you on a team somewhere. We'll be good. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you in here. We'll, we'll move somebody over. Maybe the worst player in this in their class, we can, we'll can move him to quarterback yep, for right. sure. 
And so we can get you in there. Mickey Browning signed with ACU. And I believe that might be the only guy. Unless it was one of these linebackers here. But, yeah. Um, this class is looking really good. Jake Lewis Jr. He's not even a 58. Well. He's like the six, right. low 60s. Low six, yeah. So this, this was an amazing class. So the key question is, is Denver Tech, did they get everybody they wanted? They did not. They wa- They really Only wanted one. this guy. Cody Lee, the number one defensive tackle, would have been huge. Yeah, we had like team. we had 3,000-plus on Cody Lee. Wasn't enough. Florida just steamrolled their way to the top of that list there. Oh, well, but we get Bobby Greer. We got Derek Davis. We got Washington, Isaac Martin, and Ricky Carey. So It's pretty good. And Wallace Jones. I don't know how they – Blew Nebraska State out, but they did. And then a couple of the cornerbacks was Michael Jones, James Goodman, and that was it. We lost out on Tim Williams and Bobby Sims. Skeeters get Matt Bradica. You guys saw that when we were talking about Ardmore, Sydney Heights, Jay Balmer. Jay Balmer going to Shreveport. And, and guess where's what? Maryland? Where's Maryland? That's what I was talking about. Like Maryland wasn't even on his list, guys. He just they were just using that as a it was as a, a it was a fake out. It was a front. I mean, look at how much they beat him by. Yeah, they it? they won by fifteen thousand to the next highest. Like he he was going to Shreveport the whole way through. Totally. James Foster. We were talking about this guy as a JUCO it would be a stopgap, a nice stopgap guy. Didn't get him. And we were looking at George Thomas trying to get that wide receiver in there, and it just didn't work out. 5,700 points there. Ronnie Scott really hoping for that. Didn't work out. Justin Tolbert hoping for that. Didn't work out. It was mostly the fact that they were really going all in on Matt Bradica. And they, but, you know, it, they had a good rest of the class, guys, Yeah, this during was the good, season. too. We got Seth Lawson and Brian Scott. Lucas Anderson ended up going to Texas Tech. So I'll take it for the st- – the Skeeters. I mean, that was what they were looking for. So despite Kansas A&M not fulfilling all of their scholarships, they had six left, they still got the guy that they wanted. Antoine Skinner, the big-time free safety, number 10 in the nation. It was pretty good. I like it. I like it. I like it. And then when we go down, we do get James Tutins, Tuttons, and you want to say Marvin it. Key they did not get. They lost out to Oregon by 3,000 points. Hmm. He's not even really that committed to going to Oregon. So for whatever reason, he just really wasn't sold on any of the teams that were on his list. Kind of sucks if you're Marvin Key, to be honest. Randy Baker, we did end up getting him. Only by 240. That was a close call. Yes. Justin Tolbert, we were trying to get that guy, but didn't happen. Uh, Brandon Ray, we were talking about him a little bit earlier. He had made up his mind well in advance. He was going to Kansas A&M no matter what happened. So, all in all, very good job by the Amber Wave. All right. So, the two big signees here in this class, Pat Ooh. Dowdell and John Johnson. Damn. They get both of them, and Holy that crap. means they're going to be fine. That means the quarterback position will be okay next year. Whatever they, Whoever wins the job, yeah, it's, it's going to be okay. It's, if you're an Odessa fan, it's going to be... Maybe you're one... Might be a little shaky because eighty, you know, eighty and seventy-seven, not great right. in this game, right? For a starting quarterback, but you know, a little bump in the road on on the way to bigger things. But the good thing is, is the defense. Remember how that young defense we were just talking about it in year number one? They signed all those young defensive players. Yeah. Now in year two, they started and they took a big step forward. Now they're going to be two years under their belt. Mm-hmm. They're going to be just fine with a freshman possible freshman quarterback they're gonna be good yeah plus this class is shaping up they got they got matthew henry picked up cody ryan there lance hodge was a loss for them going to tcu that hurts for the the big 12 and then down the list here i'm trying to see if we kind of sucks amarillo only lost it by that guy by 90 yeah max hartman lost by 960 frank Pugh. Ew. We lost by 2,400. Andy yeah. Walker, a guy that we couldn't get either, and Chad Jackson. So not enough in the tank to grab these wide receivers. And as we look here and look at their wide receiver situation, they're going to have six seniors Holy next crap. Year, which is why we tried getting these guys. So maybe some of these athletes will have to move, play wide receiver. We do have some guys signed already, obviously, Parks, Nance, and Lee. But Yeah, that's pretty solid. There yeah. A couple okay. of those athletes were going to have to move more than likely. Odessa making moves. 
kind of sucks. Number 11 linebacker, Marcus Hollis. We were trying to go after him really big time. Didn't work. 74 overall player. Sucks. Sucks. But I but yeah. we knew that coming in that Auburn was going to make a big push. Just didn't 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 get it. Anthony Webb and Seth Williams, the two athletes. So again, really shooting for those athletes. Dan McTaggart, we didn't get him either. Going to Uba. We'll, t- we'll get to them in a minute. They lost out on Scott Richardson and trying to figure out who else they were was going on after that. Daniel Mack. So we got him. Yep. By five? Yeah. It's a broken arrow. Yeah, by five. five. That's pretty good. Carl Carr was not on the list, but we ended up getting him anyway. So that's Take pretty it. good. Yep. Preston White, <laughs> a uh, depth defensive end, and Kevin Campbell, a depth guard. Teddy so, I mean, right now, you know, Little Rock, it did a pretty decent job. I'm not going to give him like a. Uh, B plus. Yeah, a lot, I think I'm thinking a lot of these guys are gonna redshirt year one. Yes. Best class possibly. Mm, maybe top uh, maybe ten outside class. Of a, yeah, outside of ACU, I w- I'd probably give them the nod here. And I was trying to figure out who was on the board. It was McTaggart. They put all those points on Brian Washington to lose by 38 or 385 rather. Darrell Sims couldn't get Mickey Browning. They were. No match for 12,000 points. Yeah, unreal. That's the benefit of getting your recruiting out of the way in the, pre, in the pre-off the season. Exactly, like we were talking about. You the can focus season. on the guys that you want. Teddy Madison going there. Bo Bradshaw chose Arizona over us. We did get John Oliver and lost out on Miller and Hartman. And then Steven Adams we get as well. Wow, he didn't. he wasn't even interested in going anywhere. Nope. He's like, oh, I gotta play college football. I guess you gotta play somewhere. <laughs> you gotta wonder about those guys. They don't have enough passion. I would question their passion. It's gonna be a fun time in Amarillo. Gonna be running the football. Gonna be good stuff. Morris Campbell, Slade Morton, the two guys, gonna be pounding that rock right up the middle for whoever's gonna be playing running back. At Amarillo. So we got Freddie Bolden. That's an interesting get right there. We were really going up against Midland State, and we pulled it off. Yeah, maybe I, I should have spent more points, I guess. Yes, this is awesome. This is awesome. I'm, I'm hyped for Amarillo. We yeah. got some good players on this board, guys. Well, basically, you control recruiting for your yeah. teams, and I control recruiting for my teams. And Yeah, maybe I should have put more points. He should have, but you lost. All right, Chad let's... Randall going to Texas. We know that Justin Ross, uh, you know, feels like he's wanting to play at the, at the MAC level. He's just not good enough. He doesn't have enough confidence. That's really what it is. I don't get it. You Jermaine, get Jermaine more. Moore. Yeah, our JUCO kicker, Nigel Gonzalez. You could not make up that ground there. Trevor Givens, as we talked about, it, you got lost by ninety. That sucks. On Lance Hodge. That sucks. So if we had taken a little bit of point points off of Trevor Givens or just cut somewhere else, maybe even. John Hall, we could have cut some money off of a Juco. Marcus Dahl. We That's frustrating. Did not get him. I don't understand this game. Like, where does this player go? He just goes off into the ether. He goes off into the ether. It's How about Stephen Pollard? Uh, they, that, he spent a lot of points on Stephen Pollard. It didn't do any good. Yep, just to lose by 2,500. Roger Sanders lost by 400. Yeah. So maybe we could have put those points on, on Mr. Roger there. Matt Madison, we got, got him. him. Yep. So again... It's good. It's good stuff. It's good to see that Amarillo is pulling in some of these guys that, like I said, are really focused on building from the outside, for the inside, out. All right, McAllen Matadors. Let's see if they got their guys. Philip Goddard didn't get him. Adam Murphy did not get him. We lost by eleven hundred on Adam Murphy, and then Serge Johnson. I thought we would definitely get him, and we lost by twenty five hundred. So, but actually, the former coach. For Denver Tech, who coached at Iowa last year, is now at Miami of Ohio. Yeah, ended, yeah. Up, ended up getting that that guy Philip Goddard. He got fired after one year. Yeah, I I don't know how that's very just. I just thought that was an interesting little tidbit. Yeah, Juan Miller lost by three thousand. Tariq Sims by six seventy five. Whitaker by eighty. That sucks. So maybe we could have gone harder on these wideouts. We we did get a couple guys though, like Steve Pan. We got George Bowser, which is my guy. I wanted to get him really badly, and then that was about it. So that's how it shapes out. I did get that Jimmy Hodges signing, finally. This is just a very McCallum thing to do. Just, ooh, so close. Just didn't get there. Didn't get it. All right, so Midland State, this recruiting class turned out okay, but a lot of missed opportunities. Freddie Bolden, 
by 490. We got Weber by 3,000, 3,700. So maybe Bolden, I mean, I, I could have picked up an extra 500 to get yeah. a guy like Freddie Bolden. But we then again, it. look at this. You got that guy, Sean Andrews, so maybe that was a deciding factor. Darnell Baker by 1,200. Missed out on him. McTaggart, I don't think we were really going that hard for. Let's see what that offensive line situation was. I backed off on Trinigan, Butler, and Holly just to get this guy, Chris Davis, because we need depth, and we ended up getting Chris Davis. So that's good, I guess. TJ Lamb, you know, I hope he enjoys his education because playing football is not his best attribute. Correct. In life. <laughs> so on that note let's look at our top classes let's take a look at see what players are good at football for their life <laughs> and let's let's see who had the best classes all right acu look at their prestige NCAA. you know we we try as a rule everybody kind of starts out as a three in prestige and you just work your way up acu moving up the board there so they yep. are they signed everybody they yeah, had they 25 got, scholarships to burn and they signed all of them signed the number one class so clemson got a couple more five stars but acu killed it with their four star players and only one player below a three star that's how you know you got a good class right there, man. Here's what's crazy to me. Broken Arrow. Like, we knew it was a good class, but my goodness. What? Yeah. Okay, so they went 6-7, and seven, mm -hmm. right? With yeah. the loss in the bowl game. Yeah, and uh, Lamont Christian was the big one. And then they got, yeah, like we were talking about, Yancey, Barrett, Henry, Stewart, McTaggart. That's a great. It's a great class. I don't know what is going on. Maybe it's just maybe it's the uniforms. Alfred or it's Johansson. Brian Street. Alfred Johansson is a good recruiter. That was his... Forte, Same when well. he took the job, that's what he does as well. And then McAllen, coming off of that miserable season, coming up with the number seven class in the country. A lot of better class than Denver Tech. Got those athletes. Got Billy Adams. That was good. Denver Tech, obviously very high caliber class as well, especially on offense. I think they're going to – I mean, that's a class that's going to last them some time in the future. All right, now let's see you just finish over Michigan. By one. That's pretty. That's that's right where we are usually at. Buchanan was our big get with a five star. Good love at a four. Pettit, Hill, and the Washington Cousins at five and six. Both wide receivers. Golden, another wide receiver. I like Golden though. Yeah. And then you got Stanfield down the list there. I think Stanfield I think he and will Fenner. blossom. Stanfield think, and Fenner. Yeah. I think Stanfield will blossom into a very good player. Navy. 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 Come on. Okay, Kansas A&M coming in at 26. They did, I, they did a good job. They, look, I mean, look what they're doing. Like They're going after running backs, the wide receivers. They're going after those offensive pieces, and they want to see what's going to stick. They want to see how these players are going to fit into this new offense, and that's really what they went after, and they did a good job doing yeah. it. Shreveport with a top 30 class in the country as well. I think Bradica, the Bradica signing really helped them. That was big. I feel like he might as well have been a five star to me. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, he was on he was on a lot of a lot of good teams boards and yeah. As an eighty overall, I get. I think that was huge for Shreveport. Odessa comes in thirty fifth and a little light on the number with only fourteen yeah. players, but very quality class there. Midland gets seventeen signees. They come in at thirty seven. The big thing for me is the two stars. They got five two stars like. They could have done a little bit better, I feel like, with the threes. Possibly, possibly. Little Rock got 14 three stars in their class. And that's what we were just talking about, is they were going for depth, you know, and, and the, honestly they were going after athletes that they thought that had a lot of upside, and oh, maybe it'll pay out for them, maybe it won't. We'll have to find out. Amarillo comes in at 52nd. So interesting class. I mean, it was tough. They were coming off a bad, bad season. Lost some momentum. I, got, I think I think they'll be okay though with this class. I think it'll be good enough. They got some good players here. They got that Freddie Bolden. They got the Morris Campbell guard. The Justin Hunter is going to be good. David Sledge. Yeah, it's um at the top it's good. The bottom, eh, we'll have to see. A lot of uh, players that are having to prove themselves and have to grow. Right. 
And as we work down the list, let's see where Nebraska State is. I have we haven't seen Nebraska State yet. We lost to Eastern Michigan, Old Dominion. There oh we are. Oh my! Oh my! We, took old, a we huge, signed 12, 12 You players. didn't even sign half of what you needed. Yeah. What you had available. That was a very weak class. I mean, we don't it's have a, a lot waste. of guys, we don't have a lot of guys replaced, but we could, you know, theoretically flush some of these players out. That's and true. We didn't do it because we didn't sign anybody. So like Hargrove and Keith were like the big ones. I mean, I could a lot of these guys are gonna play right away. Like Richardson, Collier, they're gonna see the field. I look at honestly, I'm I'm not saying this to spite you or anything or, or throw, I deserve throw it. Shade. I sucked. Throw, I sucked. I'm not throwing shade. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. This was a waste. You're right. This is a this is a complete waste because if you think about it, this is what you this is what teams are built on is the recruiting aspect. And you guys didn't get 20. You didn't get 20. And you have to replace the seniors <laughs> in the upperclassmen that you're losing. Yeah. And now you're a year, you're basically, a, you're a year behind. So Nebraska State needs to kick it into high gear. Stephen Cust needs to kick it into high gear with the recruiting yeah. next season. We're going to go a lot more conservative. Early. We're going to have to, we're going to go conservative next year. We tried getting some. Some players that were in the high 70s obviously did not pan out. I mean, you try recruiting with Nebraska State, our, you know, the, uh, what, the team builder sliders are yeah. kind of low. Yeah. You know, when you're in team builder and you're doing your program info, campus lifestyle, all that stuff, we're, we're not good. It's not a recruiting hotbed. We got to take what we can get. That's very true. I, this, that's why I'm that's why I was saying I'm trying to throw shade because I understand the situation. But the fact of the matter is, is that now you're a year behind? Oh, absolutely. You got to do a. They, Stephen Cust has to do a better job of bringing in players. Yes. Whether that's two stars, three stars, you got to get the quantity in, and then let the quality flush itself out. Because you're a good enough. The lack of. You're a good enough player to where you can get a team like Nebraska State to eight and five, and almost pull a. Win was it the Alamo Bowl, yeah. The Alamo Bowl win off of uh, Washington. So right. the scheming and the game planning for Nebraska State always seems to work on the field. But Cust he needs some some players to work with. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's episode, episode number two of our off season year number two. We will see you guys on. Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Wednesday. We will have the NFL draft for you, as, as well as a recap. We haven't checked in with Jed Carmichael, Robert Bishop, in a couple months, I believe. So yeah. we're, we're going to have their end of season, see how they finished, see what these NFL teams are looking at. We will unveil the team that signed Jeff Henderson as their offensive coordinator. Yeah. And we'll see if he selects one of these quarterbacks, like Montana Flynn, CJ Wicks, maybe. Hopefully he went to a team without a quarterback like the Jacksonville Jaguars, who I want to see him <laughs> as a coordinator. But we'll, we'll figure all that stuff out on Wednesday. Correct. Yep. So if you guys made it this long into the video, you guys just got a little tidbit as far as a yeah, I mean, little spinoff series. You, you guys want to see these guys like Montana Flynn? I want to see Andre Wingo like in a Raiders uniform. That's where I think he should be. Honestly, too. We, we're not going to control it. We're just going to let the CPU do it. But whatever happens, yeah. happens. Yeah, exactly. That'll okay. be fun. All right. So we'll see you guys on Wednesday for the NFL Draft. And after that, we'll see you guys back in NCAA 14 with more off-season coverage. We'll see you guys then. As always, peace.